So if you're really into baseball, you might want to go to somewhere like Yankee Stadium. And if you're a member of the Catholic Church, you might really want to go to the Vatican. But if you're really into the Apollo lunar missions, like I am, well, the place you probably want to go is the moon. But if you can't go there, it's this room here at the Johnson Space Center. Because this is where they store most of the moon rocks and soil that were brought back from the moon by the Apollo astronauts. And I'm here with Ryan Ziegler. Before we talk about the moon rocks and how important they are, can we have a little bit of a look around? You want to show us a few things. What are you going to show us first? Well, why don't we see the vault where the samples are actually stored? The vault. Yeah. I love the sound of that already. We're going to go and look at the vault. Would you like to open the door, by the way? Can I? Oh, yeah. A friend of mine's getting married, and she had her mom. She's like 80 years old and tiny. She opened the door earlier, so no pressure. <laughs> I'm just saying. So it took two people to do the combination. No one person can open this door, and that's how high the security is. But now that it's unlocked, they're going to let me open the door. This is, this is a big moment. Yeah. Like this? Yep. Now pull. Yeah. There you go. This door, let's see how thick... Whoa! I can't stop it now. <laughs> yeah, it is. Momentum. <laughs> Why so much security? This is a question. You've got double combinations, you've got the thickest door I've ever seen. Why do you need so much security here? It's a one-of-a-kind collection on the Earth. There's really only one place you can go and get lunar samples collected on the moon. They spent a lot of time and money in the 60s and 70s to bring these back and sort of our job to protect their legacy. So they rose through the atmosphere toward the open vacuum. A trip not only through space, but through time. We got the soil, now we need to sample the rock. Go. The astronauts began to collect samples and photograph the area. The samples would consist of rocks picked up with a rake-like device, soil samples, selected rocks, and chips taken from boulders. Can you imagine that, Joe? Here sits this rock, and it's been here since before creatures roamed the sea on our little earth. Could you put a price on it? You can't. They are literally priceless because no amount of money you could give me would allow me to go get new ones to replace them. Can we go and have a look? Yeah, absolutely. Let's see what's in the so vault. Go ahead. After you. This is the pristine lunar sample vault. These are glove cabinets that are filled with ultra-pure dry nitrogen. And the reason for that? Is to keep them as much like they were on the moon as possible. So the moon doesn't have a nitrogen atmosphere. It's a hard vacuum. It's almost impossible to reproduce a hard vacuum on Earth. And so we do the next best thing, and we put them in ultra-pure dry nitrogen. So we store them in stainless aluminum storage bins. And so it takes two people to open the samples. It takes two people to get in the vault. So no one can come back and look at the samples by themselves. We would take this, and we would put it inside an airlock here. We would flush the airlock with nitrogen, and then we could open this from the outside. And if we pull on that, we would take the sample out this way, take it over to the table, open it, take the sample we want out, and then take the sample over into work in the lab. When you take the sample out of its little metal bin there, won't it then be exposed to the atmosphere in here? It would be, except they're triply bagged in Teflon. There are many, many layers of protection for the samples. We see up here it says AP15. I assume that means Apollo 15. Exactly. Right. And so each cabinet has a different mission stored in it. Now, the Apollo 11 being the first mission, it only has one cabinet. So we have less mass from Apollo 11 than any other mission, but they obviously were the most important samples because they were the first ones from the moon. I'm gonna step off the limb now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Let's go back up here. Apollo 11 samples, with the exception of a few that are stored off-site, are stored in this cabinet right here. This is where all the rocks and soil that Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin brought back from the moon are kept. Go ahead, Mr. President. This is Houston out. Hello, Neil and Buzz. I'm talking to you by telephone from the Oval Room at the White House. And this certainly has to be the most historic telephone call ever made. Because of what you have done, the heavens have become a part of man's world. So this is uh, another Apollo 15 cabinet. Okay. Apollo 15 was the first one with the rover, obviously. I mean, the weight of samples that came back from 15, that's when there was the big jump. 11, 12, and 14 had relatively 
few samples. And so here's another one of the storage bins. This oh. one's not sealed because we were working in it today. Uh, look. And so inside, you can see the way we store the samples long term. So here's one that's unbagged, 15499,179. That means it's the 179th piece broken off that one sample. So tell me the life story of that little bit of rock then. Well, so, the life story was about three and a half billion years ago, molten rock flowed out over the surface of the moon, cooled into this rock, got smashed by impacts for about 3.49 billion years, and then a couple million years ago, it was loosened up on the surface, Apollo astronauts went, picked it up, brought it back here. We put it in our cabinet, and then we started breaking it apart, subdividing it. We used a bandsaw, we used chisels, and we broke it into small pieces for scientists to study. This is the leftovers from a display sample we made to go to Japan. And the holes you see inside of it, that's gas that escaped while it cooled. So sort of like pumice on Earth. For small pieces that would get damaged inside it or that are, are loose, we would store them inside these. And they're stainless steel and Teflon. I must stop and actually look at the room for a second. So, that is the sample that hasn't been opened yet. There's just a handful of samples that have never been out of vacuum, they've never been cut, they've never been exposed since they were on the moon. Two of them are right here. So without going over this rope, because this is the, the rope of specialness, we might be able to just have a little peek. Come and have a look. One day maybe, hey? Oh, I hope I'm still here when they open that. That'll be fun. It's like the ultimate geology Christmas present. What's this room called? This is the pristine sample laboratory. So this is where we actually work on the samples. Okay. What these are, are the four main types of rock from the moon. So you have two on the left are called basalts. You look up at the moon at night, you see the dark areas on the moon, that's made out of basalts. The one on the ground here is the biggest sample they brought back from the moon. There's actually two rock types there. The gray rock is something called an impact melt breccia, formed by a giant impact on the moon. The white material is just about the oldest rock that came back from the moon. It's a rock named anorthosite, and it's 4.4 something billion years old. The rock on the far right here is actually what soil on the moon looks like. If you're expecting it to be powdery, normally it would be. This is what happens when an impact shock wave goes through the soil and centers the soil together like a brick. Now pressure wave has gone through, melted the edges, and it sticks together, but it really is soil, and you can see all the different pieces inside of it. Every rock in here is older than 99.9% .9 of rocks on Earth. There may be rocks this old buried deep within the earth, but we don't have access to them. So now we've got another glove box, and it looks like there's some work being done here. It looks like someone's cooking or something with these little trays, but what's going on here? Uh, so here we're actually preparing a sample for a scientist at MIT. And so this is a working collection. We hand out 500 pieces of the moon every year. And what you're seeing here is one of our processors breaking it apart and one of those little pieces is gonna go off to MIT to get studied. Literally, you take a hammer and a chisel and you break it. And while that sounds exciting, you have to keep track of where every piece comes from. It, it literally is the worst jigsaw puzzle in the world. Do you feel like you become blasé to what these are, that, that astronauts went to the moon and collected these things? No, I mean, I've only been here four years. It's still exciting to me, but some of the processors who've worked in this lab for nearly 40 years, and they are still very excited about it, and they still are the best protectors of the samples we have. They really understand how special the rocks are and how it's our job to protect them. This is objectivity, and objectivity is always about having one object, one thing I want to see. And when I found out I was going to get to come in this room, there was one rock I wanted to see, and it's probably the most famous moon rock, is that uh, fair enough? No, it's the most famous moon rock, yeah. Are you going to show it to me? Absolutely. Let's go and look at the most famous moon rock. So this is Apollo 15 sample 15415. It's the Genesis rock. This is the Genesis rock. To the untrained eye, it looked like just another rock. But its large crystals, formed in pairs called twinning, showed it to be a section of primal lunar crust. The thing that immediately strikes you about it, compared to almost all the other rocks I've seen, is that it's this bright white color. It stood out on the moon. This is the rock type anorthosite. It's this a rare rock type. The Apollo 15 astronauts were specifically tasked to find a big piece of this anorthosite, and they did. At Apollo 15, this was the only anorthosite that they found. Look at that. Wow. Almost see twinning in there. Guess what we just found? I think we found what we came for. Crystal rock, huh? Yes, sir. It told us how the moon formed and how it evolved for the first couple hundred million years. So this is almost the oldest rock from the moon, 4.4 something billion years old. This is a piece of the original lunar crust. So if you look up at the moon, you see dark bits and light bits. The light bits are made out of rock like this, but it formed 4.4 billion years ago, 
and 4.4 billion years of impacts have smashed it all into little pieces. It's sort of like Russian roulette. This is the piece that survived all those impacts for all those years. The original Genesis rock is about three times as big as this. Like I said, it's a working collection, and because this is such a popular sample, it gets requested a lot, and so we hand out a lot of pieces of it. You're just chipping away at this most famous rock. You're carving it away and giving it away, or? Uh, well, we have a rule. We never hand out more than 50% of any one sample, and we actually have about 70% of this rock left, but this is the biggest piece. So I'm not seeing the whole Genesis rock, but I'm seeing the largest remaining piece of exactly. the Genesis rock. Exactly. Okay. Wow. Not obliterated by billions of years of impacts and lava flows, it was a key to many mysteries. Was the early lunar crust molten? Why differences in color and density between the highlands and lowlands? Nicknamed the Genesis rock, it stands as a major clue in unraveling the formative processes of the moon, the earth, and the planets. Learning how to grab a petulant rocks, right? Obviously, we'd like to thank NASA for showing us their moon rocks, but also our really good friend Destin from Smarter Every Day. He helped organize the trip and held the camera for us. As you can guess, Destin's made his own video all about the moon rocks and you really should check it out, as has our friend Joe Hansen from It's OK To Be Smart. Links to videos by both of them can be found on the screen and down in the description.